Hello, and welcome to Student Affairs Now. I'm your host, Keith Edwards. Today, we're celebrating our 100th episode with a super fun, special Student Affairs Now social hour. We've invited members of our learning community to join us. We also have all of our hosts joining us and our production assistant, Anne Ambrosi. The gang is all here. We're going to dive into some deep thoughts, some real wisdom, and some rapid fire questions and hear from so many great folks who are joining us here today. This will be fast paced and maybe a little chaotic, so buckle up, but first, some business. Student Affairs Now is the premier podcast and online learning community for thousands of us who work in, alongside, or adjacent to the field of higher education and student affairs. We release new episodes every week on Wednesdays. Find details about this episode and our browser or browser archives at studentaffairsnow.com. This episode is sponsored by Leadershape. Go to leadershape.org to learn how they can work with you to create a more just, caring, and thriving world. Today's episode is also sponsored by Simplicity. A true partner, Simplicity supports all aspects of student life with technology platforms that empower institutions to make data-driven decisions. As I mentioned, I'm one of your hosts today, Keith Edwards. My pronouns are he, him, his. I'm a speaker, consultant, and coach, and you can find out more about me at keithedwards.com. I am broadcasting from Minneapolis, Minnesota at the, at the intersections of the ancestral homelands of the Dakota and the Ojibwe peoples. Welcome, everyone. Let's get to this. I'm going to turn it over to Nat Ambrosi, our production assistant, who's going to kick us off with introductions and our first questions. Over to you, Nat. I am so, so excited to be with our full team here of hosts, as well as all of our guests that have been on previous episodes. So welcome to all of you. To kick us off, let's get started. Um, to the hosts, I wanna um, send you off on a question. Please introduce yourself, as well as share a guest that you'd really love to have on the show. So if you could pick any colleague, any friend, anyone that you can just say like, hey, you, who would that be? Yeah, I'll go first. Uh, Keith Edwards, my pronouns are he, him, his. I'm a speaker and consultant. Uh, the guest that I always wanted to have on was Bell Hooks, who uh, mm. I had a fascinating uh, airport ride with without really realizing it. Um, but unfortunately, Bell Hooks or Gloria Watkins has passed. So my new answer would be um, Adrian Marie Brown, who wrote Emergent Strategies um, and Pleasure Activism and some other things. Uh, Glenda Guzman, uh, Associate Dean of Students at UC Berkeley, uh, using he, him pronouns, um, recording this from Livermore, and uh, the unceded territory of the Palin tribe of the Lonely Peoples. And the guest that I would have loved to have come on was my mentor, Dr. Keith Neiser. I think we did a couple episodes mm. where we, we got to talk um, with just people who've been inspiring and Keith has been a big part of my professional career. So I would have loved to have had him come on, but he passed away um, not too long ago. Mm. Um, in terms of who I would want to, that's a secret. I am not gonna share that. So I'm gonna pass it on. <laughs> right, I love the secret though. Now I'm gonna be wondering forever. Um, <laughs> Rochelle Pope, I'm the um, Senior Associate Dean for the Graduate School of Education at the University of Buffalo. I use she, her, her um, um, pronouns. And um, I'm also um, um, Associate Professor in the Higher Education Program. The guest that, oh, and I'm on the um, um, unceded homeland of the Haudenosaunee people. The guest that I would like to have, and I don't think it's ever going to happen, and I fangirl about her all the time, is Bettina Love. And I have been scheming to try to get her to come on here and um, uh, talk with us. But who knows, maybe. I'll jump in here, too. So hi, everyone. My name is Nat Ambrosi. I use she, her pronouns. I'm currently in San Diego and I am the production assistant for Student Affairs Now. So I am no longer in Student Affairs, but I'm still keeping my ties to it through listening to all the episodes and learning a lot of what's going on in Student Affairs. If I could pick anyone um, to be on an episode, I'm gonna call out my um, RA supervisor when I was a sophomore and a junior. Uh, her name's Alex Garney. Um, she really got me into wanting to be in Student Affairs um, and she now does community work. Um, and so I think she'd be a really cool guest. Hey, 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 um, this is Susana Munoz and my pronouns are she, her, hers, ella. And I am an associate professor in the School of Education at Colorado State University in Fort Collins, Colorado, which is 
the unceded homelands of the Ute, Arapaho, and Cheyenne's people. Um, I was like, okay, who do I really want? I've been, I've been, uh, this is sort of like a plot. Like, I'm hoping you hear this and you will say, okay, I'm coming on. And that would be Lori Patton Davis. Like, I feel like, Lori, we need your wisdom. We need, we need all of you, like your, your expertise, you know, critical race theory up in here is like all over the news. So Lori, let me know when you want to come on. So yeah, so that would be my, my wish. Nice. I love it. I love it. I love Lori Patton Davis. Um, uh, hello, everyone. Heather Shea, she, her, hers are my pronouns. Uh, I work at Michigan State University as the director of Women Student Services, the interim director of the Gender and Sexuality Campus Center, and a faculty member in the Student Affairs Program. Um, Michigan State is actually on the um, ancestral, traditional, and contemporary lands of the Anishinaabe Three Fires Confederacy of Ojibwe, Ottawa, and Potawatomi peoples. Um, you can read a whole lot more about land grant institutions and their stolen land at Land Grab U. Um, Keith, you, I bet you could guess who I'm gonna say. Paul Shong. No, no, this is a more famous person. Although Paul Shong is on the list, Paul. Brene Brown. Watching. Yes, oh. I knew it. Oh, my cat, yes. No, Brene Brown would definitely be my person. I, I actually had my final class of the semester today and I used a quote from Atlas of the Heart, which I just uh, finished reading. Oh my gosh, I would just be so like a fangirl all over Brene Brown, so. Yeah. yeah, I would definitely tune into that episode. All right, I got the question. Let's turn our attention to our guests. Um, let's start with, if you all can just give us a brief introduction. So name, pronouns, your institution, what you do. And no pressure now, but your favorite Student Affairs Now episode, and you got to do this in 30 seconds or less. Rob, <laughs> you're leading off. So much pressure. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Rob Brown, he, him, gender pronouns. I serve as a director of DEI for the Medill School of Journalism at Northwestern University, and I'm also a doctoral candidate at Colorado State University's Higher Ed Leadership Program. And my favorite essay now episode features one of my cohort mates, Autumn Wilkie, uh, on disability. And I learned so much from Autumn, and it was great to listen to her knowledge and a few other folks on that pod. Thanks, Rob. Um, I can go next. Hi, y'all. I'm Chelsea Gilbert. I use she, her pronouns. I'm currently a third year doctoral student at The Ohio State University, where I get to work with the amazing Dr. Lori Patton Davis. So I'll put in a good word for you, Susana. Um, and I'm on the land of the Shawnee, Miami, Lenape, and Wyandotte peoples. I study higher education and student affairs, but before this, I was a practitioner for eight years. And my favorite essay now episode, um, I think was re-aired at the end of last year. It features Dr. Jason Lynch and some colleagues, and it focused on trauma and burnout. And I just really love the way that he um, and his colleagues talked about both practical strategies for practitioners, as well as systemic changes that need to be made near some of my own research interests. Um, yeah, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. We are going, Dan, let's go with you. All right, thanks for having me. My name is Dan Bureau. I use he, him pronouns. I'm the Assistant Vice President for Student Health and Wellbeing at Louisiana State University. Um, and I am the immediate past president of CAS, the Council for the Advancement of Standards, which I got my time hop notification today that a year ago we released the um, episode on the Faldos. So I'll put mm -hmm. that out there. Not my favorite episode though. The trauma one, Chelsea, is certainly up there. But Susanna, your uh, episode with Craig and Shruti uh, on identity conscious supervision. I know there's a third person there as well, but that's the there's one. Rob. There's Rob. <laughs> Rob, nice job, right? Um, really, Thanks, really enjoyed that one. But it was very important for all of us to bring that into our work. So thank you for doing that. So good. Hi, I'm Aja Holmes, and I am the Assistant Dean of Students and Director of Community Living at the University of San Francisco. My pronouns are she, her, and sis, and I'm coming to you from the unceded lands of the Ramatush Ohlone people. And I have to say, my, my favorite episode um, was 
the one about redefining the RD role, because that got me like so much fan love. I went to conferences. I was on the street. People were like, oh my God, I saw this episode, you know, and they were like, he was just so real and kept it so real. Yeah. But a lot I of also, student affairs blasphemy on that one. I was like, great. <laughs> I also do. Um, as somebody who's now working back at a religious institution, a Jesuit institution, I was looking for ways to kind of also continue to sharpen my saw. Um, and so one that I have really looked into also too is the religious, uh, secular and spiritual identities on campus. Um, as I've just kind of engulfed myself now back into what it means to be a Jesuit in a, uh, at a Catholic institution. So that's also been helpful to have resources like Essay Now to produce podcasts like that so that we can kind of take and choose bits and pieces uh, that fit the type of training that I need now. And I think I'll go next. Hi, folks. It's good to be here. Stefan Sanz Ramirez. My gender pronouns are he, him, his. I'm currently an assistant professor of higher education at the University at Buffalo, which sits on the um, unceded territory of the Haudenosaunee peoples. I share a beautiful space with my awesome colleague, Michelle Pope, here. And um, I would say, I mean, there's a lot of good episodes. <laughs> They're all great. Um, one that really stood out and caught my attention was actually facilitated by, by Rochelle and um, that featured Annalise Singh and it was racial healing and liberation on college mm -hmm. campuses. Um, I would say that that one um, really, uh, really stood out to me and is a really important topic. Y'all go, right? Okay, great. Uh, my name is Neil Galimo. I am, uh, I use my uh, he, him uh, pronouns and I am blessed to serve and learn from the very fine students of Texas A&M Scalvisman campus. Um, I am the director of campus living and learning down here. And my favorite episode is, the easy answer is, is the one with Dr. Laura Dong. Uh, that book changed me um, for the better. And, um, but I think also the one that sticks with me because it blew my mind was it was uh, the one on assessment. Um, Cause towards the end, they started talking, I believe it was the episode where they started talking about um, the native perspective on the nature of knowledge. And I just realized like, oh my God, knowledge, knowledge belongs to nobody. I've been wasting all this time on bibliographies for nothing. And so, um, so uh, but no, that one really like, I think about it all the time. So, yeah. Well, all of these um, um, favorite episodes bring back so much and there's makes me want to go back and watch a couple of them again. I, th I think that's great. So I've got a couple of questions for you all um, that I'd sort of like you to answer all together. Just have at it. We know that you're our favorite podcast. We just know that. But <laughs> if it wasn't Student Affairs Now, right? What's your other favorite podcast so that we can give um, other listeners an opportunity to tune into something else that's going on? The other is we have, this pandemic has done so much to us and we have so much to learn from it and hopefully take those lessons and actually use them in the future. So, um, What's your best lesson from the pandemic? And finally, what are your summer plans? So it's a lot, whole mouthful of stuff, but we are just really excited to talk about this. Um, Stefan, would you mind going first? Sure, yeah. So in addition to Student Affairs Now, like you said, <laughs> Crime Junkie is one of my favorite podcasts that I've been uh, listening to for quite a while now. Um, something that I've learned from the pandemic that I will continue to keep with me um, is the importance of being intentional with keeping loved ones close, connecting and reconnecting with folks often. Uh, the pandemic really taught me about the importance or reminded me about the importance of um, staying close to family and loved ones um, and, and prioritizing them too. Um, and I think for my summer plans, in addition to reading, writing, and pushing out publications, uh, I uh, anticipate some tr summer travels, and hopefully a lot of those places will be situated on a beach because living here in Buffalo, New York, uh, we are still in like in winter. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to uh, beach time in the summer. So thanks for the question, Rochelle. Neil. I hope you get the salsa dance too, Stefan. Yes, salsa dancing 
on somebody's beach. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had salsa dance, maybe not well, but um, uh, my favorite podcast is uh, Radio Lab. It is uh, it's wonderful. It's the gold standard. If you ask me, they take the nerdiest topics and make them fascinating um, for everybody, and they just break it apart. And I just uh, I love it. Um, best lesson from the pandemic. Uh, the status ain't quo. Um, there's mm. nothing that can't be broken and made better. Um, challenge everything. Um, absolutely. Uh, and everybody can change. So faculty members who would never, ever, they're old school and proud of it, all of a sudden figured out how mm -hmm. to uh, offer classes online. Mm -hmm. And uh, our students who had RA, uh, you know, um, rheumatoid arthritis, all of a sudden, they, you know, they have more options. And so uh, on their bad days. So I, that just kills me. And uh, summer plans, uh, I don't know, do we do anything over the summer? We'll just take it easy, right? So um, <laughs> no, dissertation, like I'm uh, obsessed. And uh, I'm really, really excited to have some time to, and I really do mean it, <laughs> like dig in and, and, uh, and wrap this bad boy up. So, yeah. Well, I have a couple of podcasts. I'm going to just tell two. One is called Nothing Much Happens. And that's the one that puts me to bed at night with bedtime stories written by, uh, was it Elizabeth Nicolo, Nicolai? And she gives us some things. She's awesome. Uh, I found out about that one over here in a conversation in a Starbucks at uh, where we were at the ACPA in 2020 before the world shut down. Mm -hmm. And then minute, my next, you saying you were eavesdropping on somebody else's conversation? I sure time. was. When that Starbucks <laughs> line is that long, we make friends. <laughs> <laughs> and then my next one is just one I, I got into here is cultivating her space, uplifting conversations for Black women. And that was started by um, a, a faculty member here. And also she worked in CAPS here at USF. She's now moved on. Um, and it's really been a great space to be able to listen to that and hear things and how Black women are navigating what's happening uh, to us right now in this society. So I appreciate that there. Um, best lessons from the pandemic. Um, having an office home space is important. Um, I did not have that at my first place, but now coming here at USF, because I have housing included, I have that. And um, I knew way too much about TV during the pandemic. Like, you know, during the pandemic, that's when Drew Barrymore's show started. And I was excited, you know, because I skipped seeing commercials for it because I had to sit in my living room and work from home with just a lap desk. Um, and so I, that, I learned that too. But I also learned that work um, didn't stop, that we were able to pivot. And so this whole work from home thing can still be in existence now, this remote working, because work didn't stop. And folks need to realize that and places need to say, every time I keep hearing, we need to go back to normal. That thing let me know that you were not at all aware of what was going on and how normal was all just having us have high anxiety. And so it work didn't stop. Now, if you need to tell me, you need to micromanage me because I need to be in the office, then let's talk about that. Let's get to the real <laughs> deal. Why do you need to be in the office? Yeah. Summer plans. Um, this is for the first time I'll be able to take a lot of time off in June just because of the way the nature of our university and that culture of that. And so I'm renting a car and mom and I are driving down the 101 to LA. And so for a con I have a book club conference uh, in LA that I'll be going to, uh, it's called Go On Girl Book Club. So I'm excited to be down there for that. And she's her first time attending and we're gonna drive down and see what we see and stop where we stop. Amazing. And one of my favorite drives. It's beautiful. Come visit San Diego. You're two Ooh, hours another away. Three hours, that's two hours? <laughs> Uh, it depends. Yeah. We're in LA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meet you halfway. <laughs> I did the one back in 2001 with my then aging parents, and it was an amazing trip. Like we did the entire West Coast, and Ooh. wow, what a blessing to be able to do that. So have a great time doing it. Yeah, we're just gonna go from here to Long Beach, and then we're gonna fly, still a fly good drive, back. Yeah, I mean, I've been fun. from here to Carmel. Is that yeah. how you Car Carmel? 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've done that before, but we're going to go all the way down. Well, I was going through my phone to figure out my favorite podcast. I only have 32 of them to which I subscribe, so it was kind of hard. <laughs> there. Um, Dan has listened to more episodes than any human being, including the host. He has listened to more of them for sure. You are amazing. Cool. And, you know, the pandemic allowed me to do that. I was walking around. I have a two-year-old. 
And so I was doing a lot of walking midday with her stroller, listening to podcasts, including Student Affairs Now. But, you know, um, the ones, I'm, a lot of politics, a lot of news. Um, but I will say that the ones that I'm most interested in right now, this one called the Quadcast, and it talks, it's about mental health. It's from the Mary Christie Foundation. And I would encourage folks who are concerned about and working with mental health and typical health and well-being kind of things. It's a great podcast, uh, very educational. The other thing I'll say I discovered this morning was called Heavyweight. And I guess mm, I on. love Neil. You like that one? Okay. I oh love that. It's it's so good. Well, second. Yeah, it's my favorite. I listened to this one today about these four guys who spent two days in 1974 riding their bikes to like from New York to Vermont. And I had never heard of this. And you know how I learned about it? By by my two-year-old listening to Coca Melon on Spotify. So that's how I got to that podcast. <laughs> um, but the, the lessons for me around the pandemic, I think really centering humanity as we work with people and creating flexible workspaces, I think is very important. I am showing up, this is my eighth month on the job. I'm really showing up as the relationships person here. I think we need that in terms of this time of student affairs. So that's what I would say I've learned. It's less about the business. Well, it's as much about the business, but also just as much about relationships and humanity and the work that we do. Summer plans. Uh, we, I have a seven-year-old that will be in camps. And I will work most of the summer. I don't have a lot of annual leave, but we will take some time to visit family in the Northeast, as well as see some family and friends in Memphis, as well as uh, in uh, the Nashville, Franklin area. So excited for that this summer. So I decided to focus on just one of the most impactful podcasts because I've got many, many favorites. Um, but one of the most impactful for me is called This Land. It's from Crooked Media and it was kind of a, a mini series that traced the story behind the, it was first 2019, then 2020 Supreme Court case, um, Carpenter versus Murphy, which was the case that kind of as a surprise um, affirmed the Muscogee Creek Nation's sovereignty over much of what we now know as Oklahoma. Um, and I didn't know anything about the case, but this podcast is, I think it's eight episodes and it is the perfect combination of historical perspectives, contemporary perspectives on indigeneity, and the law and it's just really riveting and engaging and I highly highly recommend it if you're going on a long road trip and need eight hours worth of content. When it comes to a lesson from the pandemics over the last two years, I think for me it's been how much I've come to love and appreciate solitary reflection time. Um, mm -hmm. So COVID lockdowns kind of came at a point in the semester for many of us as practitioners that was super busy. So it felt almost like whiplash for me, like, oh, wow, suddenly I actually have time and space in my mornings to go on a walk or write or mindfully drink my coffee, whereas before I would just, you know, kind of do it all on the way into work. Um, and so that's been really transformative for me. And those have been habits I've tried to keep up in the years that have followed. Um, and finally, summer plans are really just to be outdoors as much as possible. That's the gift, I think, of being a full-time student now. So I've got a couple of camping trips planned, lots of hikes I want to do with my dogs. I have a kayak rack I can't wait to put on my car. Um, and I'll also be beginning to draft my dissertation as I moved kind of toward my doctoral candidacy exams. So I'll be right there with you, Neil. <laughs> So good to know I am not alone. <laughs> um, my favorite podcast, so I think about like things that I listen to every single day and I work in a journalism school. So news is somewhat important to know, but I often feel overwhelmed by like a lot of news. So I love Up First. It's like 15 minute download of just the basics that I need to know to kind of get through a day and be somewhat fluent around what's happening in the world. Um, I also am a huge basketball junkie and I love the way that athletes are like taking back the reins of who gets to like talk about and craft their own narratives. Um, so one of my favorites is the Knucklehead podcast uh, and one of the hosts went to college with me and then went to the NBA and so it's always it's just cool to see how he's evolved from a very different person in undergrad to, to present day. Um, and then lessons from the pandemic. Uh, one, it is uh, far more comfortable to wear sweatpants every day uh, than get dressed up, <laughs> which is what I'm wearing right now. And then two, uh, just the importance of pausing. And uh, so much in my navigation of the pandemic at different points, dual pandemics or multiple pandemics, felt 
Um, there are all these different moments of overwhelm. And um, unlike, I think, prior to the pandemic, the way I chose to move and respond often um, prompted me to take a step back from different things or relationships or work in different ways. Um, and in those moments of pause, I just found so much clarity. And so now I'm just trying to build that into my kind of every day, every week habits um, and incorporate that into my life. Uh, summer, I will be um, working my dissertation proposal, the deadline, I gotta get stuff to Susana. Um, so, you know, typing away. And uh, my son will uh, turn one, so we have a very important uh, first birthday to plan uh, this summer, which we're really excited about. I love it. I love all of this. I feel like, you know, the, with the pandemic, it's really ca caused us to really like slow down, right? And just kind of like more so than we have been in any, any time in our lifetime. And so I think this is, the, the key is how do we how do we sustain the slow and the pause right so mm. that'll be the challenge for all of us but yes take me on your beach vacation and Aja I'm really good with directions if you want to be like I can navigate, <laughs> I can navigate so so I'm happy that y'all are taking some time off and and doing some good things that bring you joy and sustain who you are so and you know the writing too I, I'm, I'm with all of you that are doing writing and dissertating and um I get the pleasure of reading some of those things during the summer so I'm um, I'm there I'm there with you so as always we we kind of run out of time in terms of you know our, our time together but this is student affairs now and we always ended with what are you pondering troubling thinking about um in terms of um, the field or just um, you know, what, what is it that you're just thinking about? I think, um, you know, for me, well, one, I'm going on sabbatical for a year. So that's something that I feel like I'm excited about. Um, and how do I not make it about productivity, right? Mm -hmm. How do I reclaim the things I've lost along the way? So that's sort of like what I'm pondering now. And I think all of you have really modeled for me sort of how to sustain the pause, the reflexivity, and, and to continue to just center ourselves in this work. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about um, mistakes and I think, uh, or, or just not knowing. <laughs> and some of that I think is just being a new parent and constantly not knowing <laughs> what mm. the next day will bring. Mm -hmm. um, but I've just talked to students and faculty and staff and just my own experiences and this um, navigation of mistakes and kind of reframing, you know, where are there opportunities for, for learning, how valuable mistakes are versus um, I think some of the fear that I and kind of other folks carry around that. Uh, is something I'm wanting to shift and evolve around and, um, you know, find ways to see just what's, what's the new doorway to something new, right? New insight, new learning, um, shift in behavior action is something I've been thinking about a lot lately. Yeah, I, I think that's such a deep, deep question. You know, I always do whenever it's asked, you know, what am I thinking about now? I think um, there's a couple of things that run around for me. And the first is I'm concerned about higher education. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned that it has become an enemy, um, mm -hmm. that people are, you know, believe that there's something wrong with education in general and that we get to pick and choose what it is that is taught and pick and choose history and pick and choose um, um, who we are concerned about when they hear things that they don't really hear. Um, and at the higher end level, I mean, I think that those are the questions that are still being asked here. And I'm, I'm concerned that we're not learning from um, our past. We're not learning from other people. And we're more concerned about, um, in many places, making the news mm. than doing what's right. 
right? So anything to stay off of particular news channels. We don't want any um, bad publicity as a, instead of what's the right thing to do here. And so that really um, concerns me. And I think we can change. Um, this is the big thing for me. I think the pandemic, um, particularly the COVID pandemic taught me um, and it actually exposed higher ed. We've walked around with this myth that higher ed is very slow to change. And it takes a long time to get us from point A to point B. It's that, that huge ship analogy that we've been using. And we watched campuses completely change on a dime in, um, in, in a week, right? Mm -hmm. And now that we know that higher ed can do that, let's stop pretending that we can't. You know, I, I have, I've said in places that I think higher ed played itself. You know, it, it made... It, it exposed the reality that we will change and can change when we need to. So that's all wrapped up in that for me. Thanks, Rochelle. I think kind of building off of that, I'm thinking a lot about the research that we do in higher education and student affairs specifically and how we might be able to do that in more creative and more liberatory ways. Um, this is also on my mind because I was recently at AERA, which is like a big research conference in San Diego, actually, Nat, um, and it was beautiful. And I was at a panel where I was so inspired by the work of scholars like Dr. TJ Stewart, who um, studies students who are employed in sex work on campuses, Dr. Adrian Huerta, who studies um, current and formerly gang impacted students, um, and just studying these students who are at kind of the margins of the margins, as Dr. Stewart puts it. Um, I also heard at that conference scholars who are doing work um, kind of on the edge of qualitative research and visual methodologies and arts informed approaches that are really interesting. So part of what I'm thinking about right now in relation to my own work is how we can move the field forward, both in terms of the content of our research, like who we're researching for and with, but also the process and how we're doing that in just more, um, more creative, generative and liberatory ways. I'm going to build off what Chelsea just shared and also what Rochelle was sharing. It and it's this appreciation and challenge of interacting with other people, right? And I have this, you know, every week I get to meet with my fellow co-hosts and we, we get into this mode where we're talking about the topics that are out there. And our topic list just continues to grow. And as, as um, <laughs> folks are contacting us saying, hey, can you cover this topic? We start to realize that in our attempt to identify like trends and topics like, you know, supervision, the direction of supervision, or, you know, we talk about the great resignation, just different things that people are talking about. We also addressing things that are emerging in the moment, whether it's pandemic related, the Asian hate violence against black folks and so on. We are trying to find balance and there's just so many topics to explore. There's so many people that we want to check in with. So that's the appreciation piece. Appreciation is that you know, we've hit 100 episodes and we're, we keep on going. And I think as our list gets longer, we are tackling each episode <laughs> as best we possibly can. So uh, I'm just grateful and appreciative of that and the challenge that's in front of us. You know, Glenn, that's really an important contribution to the field. And I think you all should be applauded for the work that you've done because the topics you're covering are making all of us think. Uh, the mm -hmm. thing I will say that I'm troubling now, I came to this with kind of a funny one so I'm, I'm going to put, put that aside because I thought we were doing a happy hour, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm, more I'm happy. Yet. You're happy. <laughs> well, I'll do my funny one in a minute. Well, not funny, but like my my real issue I'm thinking about is as people that care for other people. And Robert, I mean, bless you for having a one year old. And I'm 50 with a seven year old and a two year old. And mm -hmm. so like it, it, it just weighs on you. So when you're caring for other people, whether it be students or coworkers or super people that you supervise or you're caregiving for older parents or siblings, or you have children, you know, it's a lot of hard work and we've been through a lot the last few years. So I'm always trying to think about how we throw our own terms like trauma informed and everything too. I, I just want to be better at that. I want to center people's mm -hmm. humanity. I want to center who they are, their identities and the work that they do and really create flexible work environments. My fun thing is I, I just can't stop thinking about how good this is us is. Um, and I will tell you that <laughs> so that good. show is, like I have a real serious top five TV shows 
And I've been committed to those five for a long time. But I'm thinking that This Is Us is getting in there. That show is off the charts good. So I don't know who's, I don't know who's watching that, but that's what I'm really thinking about right now. Awesome. I, I have deeply committed top five and top 10 list of shows and, and I have not watched This Is Us, but no. Parenthood and Friday Night Lights, it's the same group that made that. So I'm, I'm a believer. Um, the thing that I think about pretty much all the time is the attrition from the field of student affairs. Um, and and I, I think about that in, in, to, in three separate categories. I think there are people who are leaving student affairs that never really should have been in student affairs. I uh, got talked into it by a mentor, uh, didn't know what else to do. I got talked into it by a graduate program and they're leaving and, and, and good. There's, there's something better out there for them. I think there are people who are leaving that have evolved and grown and something else is better for them. Some other role, some other contribution, something else and, and great and good for them. And then I think we're, we're losing people who really do belong in student affairs and can make a powerful impact and a really great contribution. And because we're not willing to change, as some of you have pointed to, uh, we're not willing to, to, to look at systems. We're not looking to do something different than the normal. We're not willing to tailor things to the role and the human being um, that we're losing people who really matter to the field and the profession and our collective knowledge and our collective experience, but also ultimately to students. Um, and so um, seeing, seeing that is fascinating and how we're going to create something better is really energizing for me. I find myself way less interested in all the things that are broken and what are we going to create that's better? What would that look like? How, what would that be? What would that, what would the policies, what would be the practices? So that's the thing I'm, I'm thinking about a lot. How about you, Nat? Yeah, I, it's interesting that you say the word broken because um, that kind of is leading into what I was thinking about. And Rob, you talked about failure. And so the other day I was on Instagram, I'm trying to stay off of it, but I was scrolling through my stories on Instagram. And one of my friends put, it's a word called kin, kintsugi, which is the Japanese art of repairing ceramics. So broken ceramics, they repair them and they um, put gold on them. So mm -hmm. it takes something that's broken and makes it beautiful. And I think a lot of time, whether it be like with single use plastics or um, things within um, our life, we say, oh, that's broken. This doesn't work. This one thing happened, like whether it's a relationship, whether it's, you know, an actual, you know, ceramic bowl. And then we just say, let's just throw it out. Let's get rid of it. But really, how can we take those things that maybe once were used for something else, or if it's a relationship and really work on finding those men's and maybe those things don't always need to be mended. Um, but really like not just throwing out something just because it doesn't work one time. Um, and also I, I swim in the ocean all the time. I love the ocean. And when we go and pick up trash on the beach and all the plastics and everything, now I'm looking more and I'm like, oh man, like there's so much out there. So I think that's like a really big piece for me is how do we be sustainable and fix things that, um, are, are broken, quote unquote, but could be fixable. I love that. I, it's been a goal of mine to find some of that and add to my collection in terms of some of the, the art um, with that cups and plates and things of that nature. Um, I, I, I wanna really kind of also highlight what Keith said about what um, he is you know, pondering over. I'm, I'm looking at my scope of control and, and how can I respond to this great resignation, the great reshuffle, the great reimagine, whatever re we are calling it. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm looking at how, what changes can I make as somebody who oversees the residence life part, you know, of this um, and what does that look like? And then how that also lays a foundation for maybe my next steps in terms of where I'm next going. Um, I am concerned about this, reimagine or re leaving or everything I'm concerned of you know about that I didn't never thought about it in the three categories that you listed Keith which so that really did a good different framing for me you know but I'm also like in the midst of this great resignation you know folks are trying to now introduce a certificate program that will then exclude more folks that will add more to it and and and, and add this adds to the broken system that we that we have here and then we have already folks who you know, are trying their best to pay for whatever graduate school they have here now, and now going to think that I can't get a job unless I get this particular piece of paper or more things or, you know, and so we introduced this during a time where folks are leaving the field. You know, you've already been asking these people to do more with less, 
and we've shown that we can do more with less. And now you are wanting to introduce something that then has to then credentialize the work that I'm already doing. And I, I'm just like, come on, read the room, people, you know, and, and it's just, <laughs> and so I'm wondering what does that look like as I try to be excited at these RD interviews and wanting that these people, I want you to stay in this field. You know, I don't want you to leave. I want you to understand the transformationalness you can have when you're working with students, you know? So I'm trying my best to convey that to my current staff members and to these RD interviews that I'm, you know, in uh, during this time, the season of hiring. But those are some things that are, that are keeping me up as I'm, I'm looking at and how do I navigate, you know, some of these things that are, uh, um, that are happening within this reimagine, reshuffle, re... <laughs> I just don't, there's so many different words, you know, for it, but, you know, as, you know, Rachel said, it's, it's, it's broken and, and we have shown time and time that we didn't want to change, but when we had to, we did it. And so now let's keep going and let's do that momentum, uh -huh. you know, um, the other side of the house already thought whatever they thought about us, let's not give them any more ammunition, <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's not give them any more reasons. And let's kind of figure out how we continue to work together and not lose our folks, but also let's not burn out the ones that we have. Yes. <laughs> I needed to say yes, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Neil, what do you think? Possibly. Um, I, you know, I, my background tells me like, you know, the best things are broken. Like the most interesting people you will meet have you know stained glass right um the best things are broken and it's really about you know what comes out of it and so for me you know kind of right you know vibing off of what you said like yeah student affairs you know we made the shift you know we pivoted we did a whatever sorry Keith I saw you um you know grimace but you know we did it and um, it was really, it's very interesting to see like faculty who were like, oh, aren't you guys the pizza party people? Be like, oh, you know, uh, um, they, they want the student experience. Students want the student experience. And so part of me wants to look at it and be like, okay, how did we let that idea get into place in the first place? You know, we, we are such, you know, yeoman and like we, we, we do the work and then we move on to the next thing. You know, are we really putting the time into telling our story? Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's hard because we, uh, we have a national focus all the time. We're always keeping up and um, we have these big galaxy brain problems, but then we also have the student who needs help. Mm. You know, we talk about like cancel culture and everything, but then we got to remember that like for most of us, you know, the typical student, you know, for better or worse, is 18, 19 years old. And guys, when they screw up, that's job security. If they knew what they were doing, they wouldn't need us. So how do we balance like them doing something very dumb and like us being educators? And so I think what I'm getting out of it all is, is like, you know, how are we gonna get caught trying? Like, it's not always gonna work. Can't always work. It shouldn't always work. Um, if you're not pushing the boundaries, you're not trying, but, um, how are we gonna get caught trying? And I think that's just kind of the thing that I've been sharing with my staff and the people that uh, have taught me, so. Oh, that's great, Neil. I think something that's been sitting with me too is like, there's a lot of hate going on now, right? And I think we've been engaging in some of that, like anti-CRT, anti-Black and Brown immigrant policies and practices, um, anti-trans, uh, laws and bills that are being proposed and passed, right? There's a lot of sadness and, 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 and anger that is going through my body on a day-to-day -day basis when I hear these things. However, something that I personally been pondering and practicing is um, elevating those moments of joy um, and bringing those into my personal life, but also my professional spaces, right? Celebrating accolades, celebrating um, the successful uh, finishing of a class, um, you know, and, and constantly bringing in these type of conversations um, in, in, in adjacent to resisting and doing the hard work, right, but also bringing in the heart work um, with people that's around me and constantly reminding myself too that I need to, 
I need to re re remember to bring in those moments of joy and, and try to be that that joyful person <laughs> around other people that I get the opportunity to share space alongside. So those are some of the things that I've been pondering on my mind and in my heart as of late. What about you, Heather? Oh, yeah. Stefan, that was, that was a perfect um, lead in actually, because I was thinking about joy uh, today and um, I teach a class of master's students in uh, Colorado State's, or sorry, Michigan State's graduate program, I'm like going back to my roots for a moment, because mm -hmm. I was thinking a lot about actually my own grad experience and Susanna and Keith and I were in the same cohort. Um, at the end of our experience, there was this um, program called the Toast to Fort Collins, and it was a really important kind of transition moment. Um, and as I was thinking about that today in my class that I teach, I was like, how can I create an opportunity for reflection, um, and closure, but also acknowledging this transition, right? For the first years from their first year to their second year, for the folks who are finishing their second year and going off into their first professional roles. And they're all together in my class today. Um, and so I was really, I was recalling my own master's experience and also knowing I was going to get this opportunity to talk with you all tonight. Um, and that this is really about a chosen family. This is really about the people who bring us joy and building those kinds of relationships that sustain us over decades at this point, right? We won't even say what year we graduated from Colorado State Sahi program, but um, it was a while ago. <laughs> so um, I've been thinking about that a lot. And then the other thing you mentioned, Stefan, that really also strikes me is that, you know, for some of our students, their chosen family are their campus communities, right? And we just celebrated a transition, um, you know, experience, graduation experience at MSU a couple of weeks ago through our lavender reception. And so for, for students whose, whose family members have not been there for them and have not accompanied them on this journey through higher ed, like how critical are spaces and, and the communities that we're able to develop um, are for them and, and then connecting them with each other, right? Um, and so I've been thinking a lot about transitions, uh, you know, the process of coming to an adjournment or a closure, um, and then just, you know, what's next, right? So as we like embark upon our um, next 100 episodes, right? Like this was our pand pandemic passion project, which is clearly taking it past post pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to just keep, uh, we're just going to keep having great conversations and, and just really appreciative of all of you and your contributions to this field. And so everybody who's listening today, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. This has just been a terrific conversation in honor of our 100th episode. Thanks also to our sponsors of today's episode, Leadership and Simplicity. Leadership partners with colleges and universities to create transformational leadership experiences, both virtual and in-person for students and professionals with a focus on creating a more just, caring, and thriving world. Leadership offers engaging learning experiences on courageous dialogue, integrity, equity, resilience, and community building. To find out more, visit www.leadership.org slash virtual programs or connect with them on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Simplicity is a global leader in student services technology platforms with state-of-the-art technology that empowers institutions to make data-driven decisions specific to their goals. A true partner to the institution, Simplicity supports all aspects of student life, including but not limited to career services and development, student conduct and well-being, student success, and accessibility services. To learn more, visit simplicity.com or connect with them on Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn. A uh, huge shout out to all of the other hosts on Student Affairs Now, and especially to our production assistant, Nat Ambrosi, for all of the behind the scenes work to make us look and sound good. And if you are listening today and not already receiving our weekly newsletter, please visit our website and add your email. While you are there, please check out our growing archives. We are now at 100 episodes. My name is Heather Shea. Thanks again to all of our fabulous guests and to everyone who's watching and listening. Make it a great week, everyone.